All right, I'm recording. Hey gang, Andy here, coming at you, Pook, with a new Life After Navy episode. And today, uh, June 24th, 2016, is a very special day for me because this day is what would have been my EAOS, or End of Active Obligated Service. Basically meaning the end of my enlistment. So, um, as you guys know, I officially separated from the U.S. Navy on uh, September 25th, 2015, which uh, tomorrow would actually be my nine months of uh, separation from the Navy. But today is what would have been my uh, day of separation had I decided to stay in until the end of my enlistment. So, uh, I just wanted to make this video just to kind of discuss what I've been doing the past nine months, uh, just kind of a brief overview of my Navy service. You know, should I have you know, gotten out when I did, or should I have just waited until today to get out? Mm, stuff like that. So, um, just to give you a, a brief little uh, overview of my Navy service, um, when I was in the Navy, I joined in 2010, or six years ago today is when I joined. Um, I joined as an STG, which is a sonar tech um, for surface ships, and uh, went to boot camp, uh, in the summertime, which uh, was pretty dang hot in Chicago. Did my time there, went to ATT school, which is like a basic electronics course school, um, right across the street from RTC in Great Lakes. Um, was there for about two and a half months or so. Um, it was kind of rough because, you know, they were very strict on that base. And then after that, I went to Fleet ASW Training Center in uh, lovely Point Loma, uh, which is just a hop, hop a hop, skip, and a jump away from San Diego, if I can words right today. <laughs> I got my special coffee. All right, so hopefully I can words good today and do other things good as well. So anyway, um, did uh, several years at Fleet SW. So I basically just went through uh, A school, STGA school out there, and I went through C school as well. Uh, to learn the 56 uh, sonar suite, which is uh, exclusively designed for frigates. And as you guys know, there's no frigates around anymore, So, but we'll get to that. Um, after completing sea school, I immediately got orders to the USS Kurtz, FFG-38, formerly in San Diego. So I didn't have to go very far, thankfully. I was afraid of, you know, having to move to Norfolk or something like that, because I didn't have a car and I was an E4, so I'd have to do everything out of pocket because uh, once you're an E5 or above, then you can get paid for moving, which is how I was able to move uh, from where I was before to back in the States, free of charge, which is nice. <laughs> but again, we'll get into that later. So anyway, I went to the USS Kurtz, and then we went on a final six month deployment, uh, just like four days after I arrived. So I was very much a last minute uh, shoe in for there. Um, did six months in the uh, in Central America, uh, visiting all kinds of different places, mostly Panama. We went to Guatemala twice. We went to the the naval base in Colombia, and then we finished it out at uh, Puerto Vallarta in Mexico before heading back up to sunny San Diego to finish decommissioning the ship for the next two months. And then after that. Uh, actually, during that uh, time of deployment, um, everybody was up for orders, obviously, because the ship was decomming, so there wasn't going to be anybody else around. So uh, when I was up for orders, they tried getting me orders to another frigate, but because frigates were decomming, and my, uh, I guess, specialty was towards frigates, because that's what the 56 system is set up for. It's not in any other ship except for frigates. So they tried finding me orders as a 56 tech to another frigate, but there were no orders available. So I, I told them, um, I, I'm really interested in going to Japan. Do you, is there any way we could work something out? Maybe send me back to school uh, to learn the new sonar system so I can go back out to Japan. And I was afraid that because I would just gotten out of school that they weren't going to send me because, you know, you had to be in the fleet for so many years to be considered, I guess, like a worthy investment for them to invest even more money into you. So I was very worried about that. But because they had no orders for 56 techs and the ship was decomming, they pretty much had no choice but to send me back to Fleet ASW after the USS Kurtz decommed. And uh, I was there for another two months or so. 
Then after that, I got sent out to USS Lassen DG82, formerly in Yokosuka, Japan. Now they're in uh, Mayport, Jacksonville, Florida. So, but at the time, they were in Yokosuka. And uh, Seventh Fleet life out in Japan is way different than being in San Diego. San Diego is a lot more laid back, but Seventh Fleet, you're on call and you're just you know constantly moving all the time. And it was a big culture change for me. Uh, but I was in Japan, so you know it kind of outweighed the negatives because I had always dreamed of coming to Japan. Um, very interested in Japan when I was younger because you know my cousins, they were out in Yokosuka, Japan as well. You know, some 20 some odd years ago, their dad was in the Navy as well, and so he got orders to a cruiser out in Yokosuka. I think it was the Mobile Bay. I don't remember. I think it was Mobile Bay. Anyway, <laughs> um, he got orders out there, so the whole family got shipped out to Yokosuka. And they would always send me stuff back from Japan, you know, just little trinkets and stuff like that. Cups, chopsticks, bowls, whatever. And I remember they sent me a little Lego toy boat, which had, you know, all the kanji and katakana, hiragana, all that kind of stuff. In the little pamphlet that showed, like, upcoming Lego sets and stuff like that. And, you know, it was just so foreign to me and so interesting because, you know, <laughs> being, you know, a small town Ohio kid, you didn't, you know, especially in the very early 90s, you didn't get to see a whole lot of uh, Japan stuff. It was mostly just stuff in English, maybe some Spanish and French, maybe, you know, <laughs> every once in a great while. But to actually see like the Japanese language and stuff like that was very foreign and new to me. And it was just so interesting. And they would even send me back like some yen coins and stuff like that and say like, uh, I don't know, this is a hundred yen coin. This is worth like a dollar in America. And I was just hooked from that point on. And then later during like my high school years, I got really into anime and stuff like that. And I know, weeb, but whatever. <laughs> um, I really got, I think the, the anime that really got me interested in Japan, the country was uh, Tenchi Muyo because yeah, I know there's no mystical demons and crap like that floating around Japan, duh. But uh, just the scenery of that part of Japan, which I think is Kansai-ish region, I don't know, something like that. But just, you know, looking over hills at, you know, uh, cities and stuff down in like the valley and stuff like that. And just all this cool stuff. I'm like, this is awesome. I want to visit there someday because that's one of the... The things I love about anime is just it really likes to set the scene and set the tone. And th those are the parts of anime that I really enjoy. So, got really interested in coming to Japan at some point. Um, so, that's why I went to college um, right after high school, you know, because I kind of figured that was a logical thing to do. Um, went to college for a couple years, didn't really work out, um, wasn't really prepared for a lot of the things, wasn't very organized. Um, I did okay in high school, but you know, I was mostly just on autopilot. But when I got to college, I found out that you couldn't really do that, <laughs> at least to the degree that I was doing. So eventually my grades suffered and I lost a lot of financial aid because my mom remarried. So a lot of the grants and stuff that I was getting before, I wasn't getting at that point because uh, my stepdad and my mom collectively made too much money for me to get those grants. So I was kind of out on a lot of different fronts. And so eventually, uh, about 10 years ago today actually, <laughs> um, I left uh, college, went through a really dark period of my life, about two or three years. And then in 2010, joined the Navy, did all that stuff. Uh, okay, so fast forward <laughs> to uh, my life in Japan. So all of that stuff kind of led up to that point in 2013 when I finally arrived in Japan and got stationed out in Yokosuka, which is a town, uh, I guess it's about, what, 30, 45 minutes south of Yokohama? So it's in the Kanagawa prefecture. Um, it's really nice. I know a lot of people call it Gaijin Town, stuff like that, because there's a lot of Americans, obviously. But, you know, if you go a little outside of base, it's still Japan, you know? <laughs> they might have some shops that cater to Americans and stuff like that, but those are mostly, you know, very close to base. But if you just go away from base, even just a couple kilometers, you don't have to go very far, you know, and then it's Japan. So <laughs> anyway, I digress. So I was out in Japan for uh, about two and a half years, 
loved it out there. Didn't like the Navy life out there because, like I said, 7th Fleet is very uh, demanding uh, of you and of your schedule and stuff. Uh, but of the time that I was in Japan, I made a lot of great videos, met a lot of great people, uh, saw the different sites that I wanted to see ever since I was a little kid and all that kind of stuff, and I had a blast out there. But in uh, September of 2015 is when I got out of the Navy um, due to weight issues. I know, right? <laughs> but uh, it is what it is. And uh, my command actually you know, to their uh, credit, did what they could to try to keep me in. And they were, you know, discussing with me, you know, because the PRT, which is the physical readiness test instruction had changed when I got the failure. So there was an opportunity for me to actually stay in, you know, it would, they would just like kind of um, remove uh, one of my older uh, PRT failures from like 2011 or something like that. So, um, <clears throat> I was actually a couple days away from having that PRT failure removed anyway. So, <laughs> you know, that recent failure would have just been my two instead of my three. But uh, in any event, the PRT instruction had changed at that point. So, it would have allowed me to uh, expunge one of my failures. So, I would only have two on the record. And so, I would be able to, you know, stay in the Navy so long as I, you know, lost the weight and all that kind of stuff and I would only have one failure left. So my command was really pushing to have me stay in. They were getting ready to fill out all the paperwork and the requests and all that kind of stuff to you know, expunge that last PRT failure or the, the, the oldest one anyway. But I told them, you know, cause I was given the choice of either staying in through that new PRT instruction or to just simply process out like normal. And I weighed the pros and cons of each because it's, it's a very big decision. You know, it's <laughs> it's almost like joining the Navy, you know. It's like, do I re really want to put up with all this uh, different stuff to get all these different benefits and to see all these different countries and, you know, to defend your country and all that kind of stuff, you know, Merca. <laughs> but uh, I weighed the pros and cons, and I think at that point in my life, I was just ready to move on. I had experienced all I wanted to experience while I was in the Navy. Um, I had a lot of fun, had a lot of bad times too, but I also had a lot of good times. And I think at that point in my life, I was just ready for the next chapter of my life, you know, going back to college, finishing this time, and uh, to just move on from there. So I talked to my chain of command, I let them know, you know, everybody from my LPO all the way up to the captain, actually. <laughs> I had the captain talk to me about it. And I let them all know, you know, I appreciate you guys for, you know, trying to stick up for me and trying to get all this expunged and whatnot. But I feel that it's probably best for me to just, you know, process out because um, if you get processed out, I don't know if the instruction has changed since I got processed out. Um, but uh, if you get, uh, at least during my time in, um, if you got separated due to weight issues, um, you don't lose any of your benefits. It's still an honorable discharge. So I don't know if they've changed that since, but uh, during that period of time, I was still would have gotten an honor honorable discharge. I wouldn't have lost any of my benefits, which is what ended up happening. So I decided to move forward with the processing out. I told everybody, all the way up to the captain, myself, <laughs> went up there in person. Uh, so I told everybody about it and they were very, you know, okay because they knew that you know I wanted to get out and stuff like that and I wanted to go back to college because I was very uh, adamant about that I was looking up different colleges even while I was still in before the whole weight issue thing kind of happened and I was just kind of planning my life out long term you know in the next couple years or whatever and so I would get like the uh, shoot, what's that magazine called? I think it's called like GI Pay or something like that. I don't know. Or it's it's basically like a little magazine that discusses uh, like career options for military members after their service. You know, like hey, you could be an electrician or you know you can work in this engineer company or something like that. And they have all these different options and they show off different uh, veteran friendly schools, you know, by recommendation from other vets and stuff like that. And I wanted to go to a school that was uh, nearby to where I used to live in Salina, Ohio. So about West Central Ohio, somewhere in there. 
<laughs> um, but I wanted to get some place that was fairly close to where um, if I wanted to visit my folks I could without having to like book a flight or anything like that. So originally I wanted to go to OSU, Ohio State, in Columbus because they were lauded as like the number one most veteran friendly school in all of Ohio and this that and the other. And so I was like, all right, no brainer, cool. You know, it's about two and a half hours from where Salina is. So if I wanted to zip on over for the weekend or whatever, I could do that. So I applied to there. And I also applied to Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo because they were also a very uh, veteran friendly program. They had the major that I wanted. Uh, one of my favorite YouTubers, um, the late Roger Swan, actually went to Western Michigan. So that was kind of a, an endorsing an endorsement for me to at least check it out. So I applied to both places. Um, I got an email like maybe a week or two after applying to OSU saying, sorry, you missed the application uh, deadline or whatever like that. So it was like, yeah, sorry kid. <laughs> so they didn't even look at my application. They were just like, ah, you, you forgot the date or something like that. And I was like, this is the most veteran friendly school in Ohio. They don't understand that veterans get out at all different times of the year it's like it's not like we get all cycled out during the summer or during the winter or something like that to where it's convenient for them we just we get cycled out all the time and you can't make an exception or exemption for that or at least note that hey you're a veteran so that's why you're applying at this weird time yeah you know, it's just i i just got mad about that so i so was like all right fine osu is out <laughs> so i went to uh, wmu western they got back with me, their VA coordinator got back with me uh, within like two days, I think. And uh, he was like, yeah, man, you know, you just need this, this, and this, and then we can get you set up. Um, gave me some points of contact so I could let them know, hey, I'm in the process of getting out. I'm not out yet. I uh, still got to get my DD-214 and all this other stuff that I had to get in order to get GI Bill benefits, which is going to be in a future video, you know, how to go to school on the GI Bill. Uh, coming soon. But anyway, uh, so I did all that, uh, got accepted into Western pretty easily, and then in September 25th, 2015, got officially processed out of the Navy, uh, went back to my hometown in Salina for a couple months uh, because I had just missed the, uh, the deadline for, because I originally applied for uh, the fall semester, but I just missed the deadline for that, and so I decided to shift everything over to the spring semester so I wouldn't be starting until January so I had a good amount of money saved up I think it was about 12 grand I want to say altogether. so I spent about half of that on a car because I wanted a nice newish um, vehicle with uh, all-wheel drive because I knew it was gonna be very snowy up there and you know <laughs> the Prius doesn't exactly cut it up in Michigan at least during the winter which is most of the time, so um, yeah, I do pay for it in gas, but at least I'm not slip sliding around in the snow, so you know, <laughs> pros and cons. But anyway, so I spent about half of my savings on, on a car. Uh, the rest of it was, you know, for moving expenses, well as well as living expenses, because I didn't uh, start to see those GI Bill checks until uh, the end of January, because uh, I didn't know this, but at, but. Uh, Apparently, you only get paid for whatever the previous month was, and because I didn't go to school in December, because they were on break and stuff like that, um, I didn't get paid in January for my GI Bill stuff, so it, that all had to come out of savings, and then as well as for the moving expenses, for like the U-Haul, and boxes, and all that kind of stuff, and then moving into the apartment, so I had to pay like first month's rent, I had to pay for... Uh, the utilities to get turned on, all this other stuff. So even though, yes, I did have a lot of money at the time, it all pretty much went away, you know, once I moved up here because of all the expenses incurred from that, as well as the fact that I didn't have a job until, you know, near the end of my spring semester, so around May-ish, is when I got the job working at Mickey D's. <laughs> so it was like a blast from the past all over again. So. You know, the GI Bill pays a lot, but you know, it's a very fluctuating thing, which again, I'm gonna talk about more in a future video, so I don't wanna give too much away. <laughs> but 
Anyway, all that stuff led up to this moment right here, making this video. Anyway, kind of backtracking a little bit more, um, kind of all over the place with this video, sorry. But uh, backtracking a little bit to about a couple days ago, uh, one of my former friends now uh, sent me these really nasty messages on, uh, on Facebook, you know, saying how, you know, I'm not gonna get into all the details, but one of the things that really stuck out to me was the fact that, oh, you're telling everybody that you got out, but, you know, you couldn't stay skinny to be in the Navy and you got kicked out, you know, you're not, you're not a real veteran, you're not a real boy, you just got kicked out because you're too fat and disgusting, man, you know, paraphrased, of course, but that's the basic gist of it, and so I just got really mad and blocked him and his wife, too, <laughs> nothing against her, I just don't want him spying on me, so, no offense to you, but, uh, anyway, I kind of thought about it. Because, you know, yes, I did get kicked out due to weight problems, but I didn't lose any of my benefits. Uh, my chain of command was more than willing to keep me in. So it was less of a, you're getting kicked out, period, end of conversation, and more like a, well, do you want to stay in or do you want to get out? So I actually had a choice. So it wasn't, it wasn't just, you're getting kicked out, you're done. So I actually had a choice, so that's why I say that I got out, because I chose to get out. I could have chosen to stay in, just as easily. I'd probably have to go to extra PRT sessions to kind of lose the weight, to show to them that, you know, I'm staying in in good faith and stuff like that. But, I had a choice, and that's why I say I got out, rather than I got kicked out, because I had a choice. So... To you <laughs> fuck you <laughs> anyway um yeah so getting to the point of this video about 20 some odd minutes in <laughs> i know this is a long one but uh, i'm in a good talkative mood so anyway um do i regret getting out when i did versus today which is when i would have gotten out had i not re-enlisted um no i mean there are some things that i regret just due to the timing of everything because you know nobody was hiring during the winter so I couldn't get a job for a long stretch of time and I also had to basically just sit at home do nothing for like three months while I waited to get an apartment up here in the Kalamazoo Portage area as well as uh, just waited for school to start because it didn't really make sense for me to get an apartment without you know having those nice GI Bill uh, checks coming in So I would have been even worse off savings wise had I moved immediately. Yeah, there's some things I regret You know just due to the timing of everything it kind of threw off my You know savings and my financial situation kind of got out of hand a little bit this year due to well lack of funds but I think now that I'm in a much better place. I have a job now, so I'm you know, catching up on bills again, and soon I'm gonna be uh, starting to save up again. Because my goal is after graduation, I wanna move back to Japan, ideally to work in an IT, at an IT job, but if I have to teach English to the kids to kind of get a visa or whatever, it's fine, whatever. <laughs> as long as I'm in Japan, that's, that's my goal. So I'm just gonna be saving up as much as I can during my time here and uh, using that money to, you know, move to Japan, live there for a while, whatever the case may be. So, uh, do I have any regrets for getting out when I did? A couple, but I think overall, you know, I'm happy that I chose to get out. And yes, I did choose to get out, as I stated before. It's all a choice. Could have chosen to stay in. You know, beating a dead horse here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, overall I'm happy where I am right now. Got a nice full head of hair. So I can't complain too much. Yeah, I mean, I don't make as much money as I used to being in the Navy. Um, sometimes I worry about, like, money, you know, for food and stuff like that. But uh, overall, I'm in a pretty good place in my life. Um, starting to pick things up, or pick things back up again. Um, and just ready to move forward with the next chapter in my life. So, yeah, no regrets. <laughs> So that doesn't mean that I'm discouraging people from joining the Navy. Um, if anything, I would highly recommend that you guys join whatever military service, at least for the initial four years, just to see, 
you know, if you like it or not. And I do have to say, you know, the military is not for everybody. And I'm going to make this a future video, as I said, you know, is the military for everybody. But uh, overall, I just recommend at least trying it out. Wait till you're 21 at least, because at least you can drink. <laughs> you may not be a drinker now, but, you know, <laughs> you hit those ports, man, and it's kind of, kind of a bummer to, you know, just kind of sit there while your pals are getting all schnookered. So, just saying. But, I think this video's gone on long enough, so we'll save all those different topics for a different day. But for now, no regrets, living life to the fullest, as much as I can anyway. <laughs> so, with that said, this is the Andy San. Sign up for now, thinking you guys boop, for tuning in to this rambly um, celebration of my joining the Navy and getting out of the Navy and all that kind of stuff, and for watching my other stuff. And uh, future Life After Navy videos are coming soon. Uh, I've been a little busy lately, so it's been kind of hard to get these videos out, but they are coming soon. And I do have topics, so yeah. And if you also have questions about um, getting out of the Navy, uh, some Navy questions I'll answer, but it depends on, you know, I can only ans answer them based on my own experience, so things might have changed since I got out, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, thank you guys for tuning in, watching this video, watching my other stuff. Also, I want to thank you guys for liking the thumbs, commenting, subscribing, send a few friends to the party, and hey, as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye.